In tonight's arena, sex with children? Nothing wrong with that, say the experts. A Labour leader and a right-wing Tory argue about immigrants. And how teachers are indoctrinated and then teach your kids. Hello, good evening and welcome. You have just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin and thank you for joining me. Now, the children went back to school this week, which is why we're covering the education issue at Sun News and, of course, here on the arena. Now, one aspect of all this we, we, we haven't really touched on enough, though, uh, is, well, sex. I, I'm from Britain. It's hard for me to say that, but sex. Now, sex education. Now, don't be embarrassed. This is a serious issue, extremely relevant, because just a few months ago in Ontario, for example, the government proposed, quote, more discussion of gender identity and homosexuality at a far earlier age. Hmm. They had a specific purpose in mind, and believe me, it wasn't to the legitimization of mum, dad, and family. A broad-based opposition was formed to this extremist idea, just ordinary, but really quite angry parents and people who, who merely thought that, well, even more discussion of homosexuality, masturbation, and sex in general might be a little inappropriate for kids who still waited for Santa every December. But this battle was painted in the media as being between the kind, progressive and sophisticated on the one side, and the scared, primitive and hateful on the other. Just as it always does uh, in the eyes of the chattering classes. And actually, it's always baffled me how the, the aggressively childless or the 1.2 kids brigade are thought to be the sexual experts, while those of us who are more traditional, more conservative, of larger families are thought to be intimidated by sex and sexuality. I mean, good Lord, we're always at it. <laughs> we love it, we celebrate it, we revel in it. Rejoice in the fecundity and, and, and fertility, positively dance in the joy and sweetness that is God's gift of sexual intimacy within a love and romance-filled marriage. It's quite good, isn't it? We're not scared of sex, but our neurotic, sexually confused opponents are obviously terrified of us. And when it comes to sex education, the parent is or should be the primary educator because the person who gave life to a child has the right, the duty, and the ability to instruct that young person in the fundamentals of life. But, well, you know what's happened. Years of fatuous movies and, and television have indoctrinated us that parents are too clumsy and absurd to teach their children about birds, bees, and bodies, so the state had to take over. Better a public health nurse than a mum. Better an embarrassed teacher than a dad. One columnist in a national newspaper in Canada, uh, a gay man with no children, wrote during the Ontario debate, and this is certainly not confined to Ontario public education, believe me, that the nasty critics of sex education don't seem to realize that kids are aware of sexual issues because of the internet. Wow! I mean, who knew? No parent ever had any idea before this banal fellow told us the news that our children saw things, read things, of course we're aware of this. We're aware because we're not fools and because they're our children, our children. As surprising as it may be to our new social masters, the human race has continued to procreate and people have been taught about sex for rather a long time now. Indeed, this is important. Since the introduction of state-based sex education, the rate of sexually transmitted diseases, so-called unwanted pregnancies, pornography-addicted teens and sex-linked depression has steadily increased year after year. There's simply no evidence at all that young people are more responsible and happy if they receive school rather than family-based sex education. But increasing proof, actually, that public sex education policy is tendentious and agenda-driven. It's all part, of course, of a, of, of a larger problem. Public education does not mean that teachers and education civil servants are suddenly in charge of our children to dictate how they are raised. But surely this approach, this assumption, is inevitable if we rely on the state to do the job that we should be doing. Look, it's time to take back education, take back family, and take back children. Let's see how teachers' unions and those who make their living from public education react to that one. It should be, well, very sexy. <laughs> 